This episode of The Inspiration Show is super special because we're going back in time. Katie Laduga is an incredibly talented performer, dancer, actor, singer, and dance educator. She truly does it all and inspires me endlessly. Katie is currently making her Broadway debut, portraying Linda McFly in Back to the Future, the musical. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining me. It's such an honor to have you. Oh, thank you for having me. So when did you discover that you had a passion for dancing, singing, and theater? Um, I grew up just dancing around my house ever since I could walk, you know, and I think it was my dad took me and my sister to see Wicked, I think when I was like seven years old, and I just sat in like the fifth row, just watching Idina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth and being like, yeah, I want to do that. (laughs) That's amazing. I know Wicked is like a source of inspiration, I think, for every theater kid, because there's just so much love and heart in that show. And that show is truly everything. And I think when you watch it, you know, of course, you're like sitting so close and you're just like, I want to do that. And I think it's so special how you're doing exactly that now. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. So what inspired you to become a performer and who has been an inspiration of yours throughout your career? Um, so I think just like telling stories in general, um, has inspired me because I think just like growing up and having other people's stories being told and that helping me through my life and my times and just like kind of passing that on, um, has been something that's super important to me. I think like, uh, a lot of the people that I've worked with have been inspirations to me in my career. Um, and I think it's just more so, yeah, getting to getting to do it. It's actually crazy because I've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, I'm 30 years old and I made my Broadway debut at 30. Um, but I don't want to contribute to the narrative that Broadway is the end all be all. I really do believe that theater is theater. And no matter what, where I go, what I do, I'm doing the same quality of work anywhere. You know, it just happened to be in New York now. Um, So I just, yeah, I'm super grateful. And um, I know I went off topic there, but uh, yeah, a lot of people that I'd be sitting in dressing rooms with in like South Carolina, they were in original productions of a course line on Broadway, right? But we're still in the same dressing room, all doing the same thing. So yeah. Sorry, I went off topic. Yeah, no, I love it. And it's so true. Like, that's my favorite thing about theater too, you know, getting to tell these stories and bring yourself to these stories. And like, as a young actor, I completely agree with you on that. Like Broadway, of course, it is so glamorous, but it's not the end all be all. Like if you make your Broadway debut, that's amazing, incredible. But if you don't, that's okay too, because, you know, you're doing the same thing anywhere. And like you said, it's the same quality of work. And as long as, you know, you're doing what you love and, you know, you get to tell these incredible stories, it's just incredible. And that power of theater is just so special. And when you get to do it it's a feeling like no other yes I love yes I love it and I agree special. so you began performing professionally at the age of seven appearing in La Boheme at the New York City Opera so what drew you to the performance element at such a young age yeah um I was just my my mom put us in like chorus and she was a singer and we just we were a very musical family so We just got started in the children's choir there. And then from there, you have to audition for each specific show. And I remember just singing like happy birthday. And then they taught us a little bit of, you know, uh, a song from the show. And yeah, I got the call and that was my first professional show um, in New York, which was so cool because I got to leave school early. And like, I just remember like being like, being like, bye guys, I'm leaving like that was like the coolest part for me um but yeah no I loved it and it was such a great experience and opportunity for me yeah that's so special I completely relate to that like I did a tour when I was in grade five so you know getting to like miss school to like go on tour for a little bit be like bye everyone that's not fair but like doing school on tour it's not easy being a child in the industry is not easy (laughs) correct yeah so Yeah, you studied musical theater at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy and then began traveling the country, performing on cruise ships, national tours, and in regional theater. So what was your experience like studying musical theater as well as your experiences in these productions? And how do you feel that it shaped you into the performer you are now since you've been performing from such a young age? Yeah, I absolutely loved college. I think with any program, and I tell my students this, you get out what you put in to it. So for me, it was a dream because AMDA is a very rigorous program and 
I, all you're doing is singing, dancing and acting during the, like, and for me, it was like Christmas every day. Cause that's what I wanted to do. That's what I love to do. And I just put everything into my training. And so I got a lot out of it. Um, and I think that's with any program. Uh, and I think I learned just as much, if not more on actual jobs. So like cruise ships, how to maintain, uh, your voice, how to maintain your body doing all those shows a week. It's, it's rigorous. Um, and just like getting, again, like I said earlier, getting to perform and be with so many other people of different ages, backgrounds, genders, ethnicities, and just learning from everyone. I feel like I'm the performer and person I am today because of the people that I've surrounded myself with and been inspired by. You know what I mean? Definitely. It's so special. And a lot of the shows I've done, I've been like the youngest in the cast. So I kind of like to have those older cast members like take you under their wing and like they provide you with like experience and advice. I think it's so special. And that really shapes you into a person and also as an actor and that inspires you to, you know, be better and work harder and to make your performance the best it can be. It's really special. Yeah. So you are a dance educator and have been teaching dance for many years. Can you share what your experience has been as a dancer and now sharing that passion and the art of dance as a teacher? Absolutely. Um, teaching is something that I'm super passionate about. I love my kids. They're my babies. Um, I got into teaching because my teachers were so important to me, but also because I feel like in the competitive dance world, there was a um, a huge gap between how we're training our dancers and like to be employable, especially in the theater category. So my originally, the way I got started in the competitive dance world was to bring actual theater to that stage um, and to their training, because I feel like not once have I been asked to do an aerial or a flete turn, but I've been asked to do the twist, to do the jive, you know, like, the different stylistic movement of different time periods. Um, and I felt like that was something that was really missing from the training in dance studios. So I wanted to bridge that gap more. I also wanted to create like a safe and healthy environment where I could teach my students how to advocate for themselves, um, how to have, uh, you know, how to speak up in times where they don't feel comfortable um, and just like, yeah, I feel like that's really important to establish like a healthy and safe environment for them to grow and be themselves and to fail. Completely, because I always thought of it as if you never fail, you never learn. And I've been dancing since I was three. And I recently just started teaching two years back. And it's been so special, you know, to spread that love for dance that I have. And I just have to say, it was so special watching the video of you telling your students you were going to Broadway. That was that was so special. And then you uh -huh. had you had your students in the theater for opening, right? For your first performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them came and I have about like 84 of them are coming in a few weeks and just mm -hmm. like different studios I've taught at are just getting buses, busing kids in. Yeah, it's just such a beautiful thing. I've been doing it for so long and it's so cool to like have their support. Yeah, I love that. And like, kind of what does that mean to you? You know, having you have been taught them and like showing them to chase their dreams. And now that your dreams are coming true, it's so special for them to see that. Yeah, yeah. I think like it's really cool, especially with this show because of what I've been teaching them, especially about um, the social dance movements of different time periods and getting to do something like Back to the Future where we get to do 80s movement, 50s movement, right? That doesn't really exist in a show that often you go and it's really in one time period and one era but that's why I love back to the future and that's why I think it's going to be so cool for them to see this because it's like all the things that I preach to them about being an employable dancer um that's why so I think it's yeah it's really cool I just love this show it has a huge pace in my heart I love it so much yeah, so, so what fun. inspires you while teaching dance and why do you feel that you gravitated toward being a dance teacher um, I think that just giving kids a safe place to feel loved um, and have another family. I, uh, my home life was messy. So my dance family was my family and to give them that and to just like encourage them to be good, kind human beings who give grace to themselves and others 
Um, it's really less about the dance and more about establishing good character and kind humans as they move forward into the world uh, to just spread like light because the world can be dark sometimes. So I just wanna create a bunch of youthful young humans who are just lights in the world. Yeah, your dance family and your theater family, they truly become your second family. And it's so special, you know, to have those people that you can turn to really for anything in the industry or for anything just in life. It's really special. Yeah. So you are currently portraying Linda McFly in Back to the Future, the musical on Broadway. You have an extremely special journey with Back to the Future. So can you share with us your journey going back in time leading up to this point? Yeah, of course. So my best friend, Amber Ardolino, originated the role of Linda McFly. She had booked A Beautiful Noise, and uh, I was teaching every day at the time. I really didn't have, I wasn't auditioning much. Um, I, she told, we were at dinner, and she told me, and we were celebrating, and she was like, yeah, but I think, like, I think you're going to book Back to the Future, and I was like, what? She's like, yeah, no, I'm going to tell them about you. I was like, Amber, you don't have to do that. And so she was like, hey, my friend can do this. And they brought me in. I auditioned. And then that was on a Monday. Then I got my final call back on a Friday. And I got the call that I booked it the next Tuesday. So it all happened like within a week. That's so crazy. Yes, it's it's so crazy. And I love the story because like Amber has been one of my best friends for 10 years and I just really believe in supporting other people in general, but especially women and supporting women. Um, and in this business, it could get really competitive. And I really just want to shy away from that. I don't like that being the norm. I don't think it should be the norm. So I'm really using this as an opportunity to just share this. I, it, I don't care. It doesn't take away from me or my talent. It's really just about uh, my friend supporting me and vice versa. I, I've been at every single one of her shows supporting her in the audience. And it's just like such a cool thing that we got to do this together. Like I just couldn't be more grateful. It's so special. And I love that women supporting women. I completely agree with that. And yeah, the industry can be so hard with all that rejection. So I think, you know, when you get to be there for a friend and I mean, you and Amber are just best friend goals. I love you both so much. Aww. So you made your Broadway debut in the show last week. What was your experience like making your Broadway debut in this show? And how would you describe the experience of your first performance? Because I mean, your quick changes and the wig changes, I applaud you for that. Yeah, they're fast, right? I know. Yeah. Um, I loved it. I felt very present. Again, I've been doing this for a long time. So uh, I am used to putting up shows. You know, I what I'm not used to is being a replacement in a show. That was a cool experience um, because I got to replace with Aaron, who is my partner and also plays Dave in the show. Um, and normally you don't get that luxury, but the way the timing worked out, we got to do this together. That's so, so that cool. Was awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, so cool. I loved it so much. It was really, truly a blessing. Um, but I felt present and grounded and just grateful. And that was my goal going into opening night was that I just wanted to be really present and take everything in because it only happens once, right? You only make your debut once. It's a huge deal. Um, so I just wanted to be as present as possible. And I feel like I did that. So I'm just really happy about that. That's amazing. That's so special. I don't know if it's just me. I know a lot of actors have this too, but I feel like kind of like when you go on stage, you know, you do everything you're supposed to, and then you get off stage and you forget it. So like, I can't imagine what that must have been like, you know, to be present and just to be special. And the curtain call from your debut actually made me cry. It was so special. Oh, yeah, it was amazing. It really, and, the, and it's just such a, kind loving group of people you know what I mean I just couldn't be happier you know truly the best cast I remember meeting everyone for the first time and I'm like everyone is the definition of sweetness like they're amazing yeah and so are you you're the best so if you could go back in time to a specific moment during your Broadway debut or your preparation process for the show what moment would it be and why hmm that's a good question a specific moment I would probably go back to I would probably go back huh 
this is this one's stumping me my favorite I feel like when you tried your costume on for the first time that was so special oh ooh, that was good yeah ooh, the my wig fitting my wig fitting probably because it's like I got my head wrapped and just like I think walking into the building and getting to I mean I would I would FaceTime Amber during my oh. fittings and she was at her fittings at the same time so we'd be facing FaceTiming each other during our fittings and like just it it was such a special experience to do this together um yeah I think that was probably my favorite part is trying on all of the wigs and oh. having seen her in them and then them being on my head oh, you know so you guys in the same you're the same wigs yeah are you wearing any of the same costumes some of them um some of them are the same a lot of them are different oh that's so sweet how many yeah. wig changes and costume changes are there I think I remember Amber saying them but I don't remember there's a lot there's there, a lot there's a lot because you literally bow and then change again yes <laughs> yes a lot I yeah. applaud you for that quick changes are I think for me personally the most stressful thing about performing oh yeah yeah yep. yeah they're painful so what is your favorite and most challenging part about being in the cast of Back to the Future? And can you share your favorite scene, song, and memory from the show so far? Yes. So let's start with scene, song, and memory. So the, I love, um, I love the, uh, well, I love 21st century. I love it. I like, when else do you get to dance with? light up helmets on your head it's mm -hmm. so fun. it's so fun I, I love it um that I love that and then I love something about that boy that whole scene the madness where we're cheerleaders and we just get to exist in space and like honestly react to what's going around us going on around us like I love it it's just so fun um so that's probably uh, one of my favorites and then obviously the home scene that's just so fun for me yeah I was just smiling the whole way through the show it's so good yeah yeah um and then what was the first part of that sorry favorite part and most challenging part oh the most challenging is probably uh gotta start somewhere that's that's a very big challenging number to sing sing and dance you know we're doing a lot a lot a lot and you're changing a lot mm -hmm. yeah so I try to keep my uh heart rate down as much as possible when I'm backstage mm -hmm. so that I can like save and utilize my energies for when I'm on stage and when I really need it the most but that's probably the hardest number for me in the show that's so much fun do you have a favorite that stands out or like a favorite memory so far um, I think my favorite is, I love the, I love the end. Like I love back in time where after we bow, it's just yeah, number. It's yeah. So I mean, the ending like blows your mind and then that song and the choreo blow your mind. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, talented company and the choreo is so great I just randomly bust out the back to the future choreo on like regular day to day it's it's yeah, so, good. so fun it's it so really much is. fun it's yeah. so good so looking back on everything you have achieved in this industry what advice would you give to your younger self entering the industry I'm going to give my younger self the same advice I give to all of my kids and any any students, young people out there that want to do this is always preserve your relationship with what you do because it can be tainted sometimes. You're going to hear a lot of no. You're going to experience a lot of rejection when you do it for a living and you make money doing it. Sometimes it becomes a job, right? And the love, if you don't preserve that, um, you're going to, it's not going to be healthy, so my main piece of advice is always um, preserve that and help have a healthy relationship to it. Know who you are outside of it because your worth and your value as a human being should not be tied to the jobs that you book or the callbacks that you get. I love that so much. That's so special. And I completely agree. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining me on The Inspiration Show. You are truly one of my biggest inspirations, and I'm so grateful for all you do. Thank you for getting to speak with me. It 
is such an honor and thank you for inspiring me. Thank you so much. I'm you are so you are so well spoken and you should be so proud of yourself. This was an amazing interview. Good job. Thank you. You're the greatest and I can't wait to watch you shine on stage so soon. Yay.